Hey guys, welcome to another video from Foolish Engineer. Last time we have seen all about the UART and I2C communication protocol. If you haven't checked that yet, you can watch them by clicking on this card above. This time we'll look into SPI communication protocol. We'll see its basics and different types of SPI modes. So let's go for a ride. We use serial communication in electronics embedded system to transfer data from one electronic device to another and it is one of the standard and most popular communication protocols. SPI stands for Serial Peripheral Interface and it is one of the most widely used interfaces between microcontroller and peripheral ICs such as sensors, ADCs, DSEs, shift registers and many more. SPI communication is a synchronous type of communication protocol. In synchronous communication protocol, all devices who are communicating with each other have the same clock signal. The reason why we use SPI communication is because it is very fast, which works with high speed up to 8 megabits per seconds or even more than that and supports higher clock frequencies as well. If you don't know what synchronous and asynchronous communication protocol is, then you can watch a video on it over here. I have explained both of them in a very interesting way by using simple analogies. The SPI communication is a full duplex communication protocol having a master and slave configuration. Well, what happens with full duplex communication? In this mode, two devices who are talking to each other can transmit and receive data at the same time. So SPI communication doesn't rely on just one data line. When two devices are communicating using SPI protocol, one out of them is master and second is slave. A master can be connected to multiple slaves and there are four dedicated connection lines which are necessary for SPI communication. At the master side, there is MOSI that is master out slave in. Then comes the MISO that is master in slave out. Then clock signal and finally there is a chip select line. As per the name, MOSI means the master sends data to the slave and slave receives that data. On the MISO line, the slave sends the data and master receives it. The clock in the communication is very important for synchronization. Master initiates the clock signal and all slaves receive or send the data as per clock signal. And finally comes the chip select line. This select line is dedicated for each slave. If there are three slaves to a master, then master will have to pull out three chip select lines and connect these select lines to each slave one by one. So if you see, this is the limitation of SPI communication. The number of GPIOs restrict the maximum number of slaves. This chip select pin is an active low signal. Generally, it is pulled high that is at VCC level if the master and slave are not talking to each other. When a master needs to communicate with a particular slave, it will pull the clock select line to ground which notifies the particular receiver that the master wants to send the data. SPI is a de facto standard protocol. What does that mean? Well, unlike UART and I2C communication, there is no specific bit frame for the SPI communication. So it becomes easy to send and receive data. 
Well, there are multiple modes in the SBI communication, which gives flexibility to program data in four different clock mode combinations. This depends on the clock polarity and clock phase. This allows the SPI communication to interface with different types of serial devices. Let's check this table. There are four different modes based on which the master and slave can communicate. In first mode, where clock polarity is zero and clock phase is also zero. In this, there is no delay for the clock pulses. The data is output immediately on the rising edge of SPI clock and input data is lashed on the falling edge of the clock. In second mode, where the clock polarity is zero and clock phase is one. The SPI clock starts after some delay and data is output one half cycle before the first rising edge of SPI clock. This input data is latched on the rising edge of SPI clock. And later, the data is again output on the subsequent falling edges of the clock. Later comes the third mode where clock polarity is 1 and clock phase is 0. Here the clock starts without delay, but it starts from the high state and data is output on the falling edge of this clock. And the data is latched on the rising edge. In last mode, the clock polarity is 1 and clock phase is also 1. The SPI clock starts after some delay and data is output one half cycle before the first falling edge of the SPI clock and input data is latched on the falling edge of the SPI clock. But later, the data is output on the subsequent rising edges instead of falling edge of the clock. So these were the modes of SPI communication. Well, that's the basic of SPI communication. Next time we'll see the data transmission and reception. I hope you got something from this. If you haven't, you can watch the video again. Still, if you don't, you can ask your doubts in the comment box below. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and finally, thanks for watching.